Yo, what is good, YouTube? It's uh, some new faces from the Sports Scoop. Today we got you back. We're back at you with another NFL uh, video. Well, I mean college as well. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who subscribed. We've hit 150 subscribers like really fast. Really, it means a lot. Thank you guys so much for for that. As you guys see, I got a new setup. I got a mic and some headset. Uh, so introduce two new face here faces here. Uh, as you know, Sir, uh, Charlie and Zach aren't here. This is my good friend, Surridge, uh, who's been a part of the channel. He, um, Surridge, say hi. Hi. Uh, this is uh, my other friend, uh, Christopher Gaddy. Chris, say hi. Um, hi yeah. So just a quick run out of the video. So today, as you can see by the title, today we are doing the top 16 uh, college prospects to look out for this year. Um, and yeah, I guess let, let's get straight into it um, with our first uh, our number one prospect going to the draft in Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback out of uh, Clemson. He was incredible fresh uh, freshman se uh, season. He is he is a, 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 a incredible quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks uh, I've ever seen in college um, in a while. I would say uh, in, in huge arm, six six. He's a big guy um, and, and can and has very good vision of the field. Serge, what do you think about uh, Trevor Lawrence? Well, definitely, he's obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the year. He's basically the prototypical quarterback of what most people, what most teams like. Um, he's drawn many comparisons to um, Andrew Luck, um, coming who came out like ten years ago. So obviously, like you said, um, big arm. He's really um, has great intelligence, um, great intangibles, and in his freshman year, he led Clemson to the national championship over Alabama. Not only did they win, but they dominated. He did. Mm -hmm. You could say he had a down year last year. He struggled definitely early in the year, but I think he'll definitely have a, he'll have a great junior year, and he should for, for now. He's a lock for the number one pick. What about Chris? What do you yeah. think? Yeah, no, definitely. In my opinion, he's like no, he's number one pick, uh, number one overall pick worthy because it's like you know, as you said, big dude, you know, six six, two twenty. You can tell, you know, he's like he could definitely he doesn't need to put on more muscle, but he could because he put on fifteen pounds his last off season. And he and he did it quick too, like because he knew he needed to take them. He was going to take some hits. He got the big arm. Obviously, you know, in high school he broke um, Deshaun Watson's high school records for most like yards thrown throughout a high school career in Georgia, like thirteen thousand something like that. It was it, almost insane. fourteen thousand, which is insane. Yes, yeah, and you know those Andrew Luck comparisons. I could definitely see a prime Andrew Luck in Trevor Lawrence, and you know he's he's young, so like he's gonna. Um, and he, he moves pretty well. He had a bunch of rushing touchdowns. Um, yeah. And, like, his legs are underrated, you know. And just, I'm just yeah. excited to see what he can do in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, literally going into – before the NFL draft this year, people are like, yeah, he's going to be number one overall 2021. Mm -hmm. I think unless he has an awful uh, season next year, um, I think this is a lock for that number one overall pick for sure. Let's Definitely. go to the number two overall pick, which might cause some – some uh, ruckus. I know it's not Justin Fields, as you guys thought it would be. We have Penne Sewell, the incredible offensive tackle out of Oregon, a huge uh, beast uh, of a player, uh, bullies people on the other side of him and uh, protected Justin Herbert very well um, this season. And uh, I, I think he, he's – I think I think Justin Fields will go before him just because, you know, Tackles are very, very highly needed, but I feel like quarterback is just a, a much more skill-based position that uh, teams are going to want uh, going into the draft. Um, but I think he's definitely a number three, maybe two overall pick, and I think he has potential to be the best player in this 2021 class by, by a lot. Um, Serge, what do you think about uh, Penny Sewell? Well, I think, honestly, he's one of, again, one of the best um, – off he's a generational talent. Um, I think if he um, – obviously, wasn't eligible, but if he did, honestly, um, enter the 2020 um, NFL draft, he could have been the first taken. At 19 years old, he won um, the Outland Trophy for best offensive tackle in the nation. I think he's a – yeah, I think um, it could be attributed to the, one of the reason, main reasons why um, – Justin Herbert um, actually went so high in the draft was because he was in a great system led by a great offensive line. He re that's one of the main reasons why he really thrived there. And Penny Sewell was the anchor behind that. Right. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, no, I definitely think that he's like the generational talent. You know, he's going to – whatever team he goes to, they're going to be getting just like 
a future pro bowler and potentially he could do more than that throughout his career. Um, yeah. As you said, 19 years old. Think about that. And man's already like a physical beast. Like I, for, he's like he's like six five, something like that. He's just, I mean, he he's gonna he's gonna be crazy in the NFL, you know. And I mean, like you'll you'll just see, you know, when he gets there. And he's young, so he'll have a lot of time to develop and put in the right system. You know, he can do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now let's go to the our next pick, where we have. Justin Fields, um, where I think that this is something we could talk about for a while. I mean, potentially the number one overall pick, depending on his season goes next week, next year, potentially. I think, I think people can't rule that out as him not being number one overall pick. I think it is definitely more, more, uh, like more known that Trevor Lawrence is probably going to go number one, but I think Justin Fields is an incredible quarterback for Ohio state, uh, played very, very well, uh, and um, I think he's he's gonna be uh, a beast on that team. Um, uh, and and there's a lot of comparisons between uh, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. And you know Justin Fields a lot more undersized, um, not as tall, not as big, uh, not as strong of an arm, I think, as as Trevor Lawrence. But great vision, good uh, um, uh, sh- like short to medium route throwing. And um, very, very good uh, um, getting out of that pocket and like rushing for a first down when when it's needed. So I think I think depending how he plays next year, maybe if a Heisman were to go his way, then he could definitely be that number one overall pick that uh, some teams uh, are looking to bring in, uh, and definitely a franchise quarterback for the future of uh, the NFL. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Um, okay, so Justin Fields, in my opinion, I believe he's 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 my Heisman favorite for next year. Um, I get it, Trevor Lawrence, you know, best prospect, Expect uh, look, looking like the best prospect, but think about it. Justin Fields has a lot of talent coming in next year around him. Ohio State got a bunch of four or five-star wide receivers. They got the number, they got like the number one wide receiver in the country, Julian Fleming, as an added weapon for Justin Fields. So mm-hmm. that's just going to, that's just going to be, that's just going to be like great for him um, and great for the success of the Ohio State team. And they're bringing, and his, Protection will get even better because uh, they brought in Paris Johnson Jr., probably a, another generational tackle we, um, that you'll see in years to come, who's an co- incoming freshman. I think he's just going to be, you know, like just, just great next year. Um, if he if he rises to that number one spot, I would not be surprised, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, I'll get, I get a little undersized. Very, you know, very strong, though. Um, can take a hit if he needs to. And his um his accuracy his accuracy is very good you know I, like I get he doesn't have a strong arm but you know he could be one of those like you know that's something that you like that short, you short throwing medium throwing quarterbacks yeah exactly yeah. you can train for that Serge what about you uh yeah I definitely agree Justin Fields um I think it it could be end up being a two horse race for um the Heisman this year between Justin Fields and um Trevor Lawrence um let's not forget that actually Justin Fields uh he committed to Georgia as the number one prospect coming out of high school um mm-hmm. again like you said very athletic um great mobility um he actually put he put up very good numbers for his first season at Ohio State I think he'll do even better like you said Chris um he he got great weapons um around him uh this uh this year um and I think yeah I think he has a, a chance to be in a, uh have an incredible year it's going to be tough for him to rise for that to that first pick he's gonna to have to have a very very good season but I wouldn't count him out because he is a very mm-hmm. very good player yeah yeah, I think the comparison between those two quarterbacks is completely going to – like, next season is going to be a vital uh, um, decider, um, and especially Heisman, whoever uh, wins that. Um, let's go to the number four uh, player where we have Gregory Rousseau. My, in my opinion, this could change because the, uh, the next season hasn't started yet, but uh, the best pass rusher in this, on this, uh, in this draft class. Uh, incredible pass rusher, very good finesse moves. Um, on the edge as a defensive end. Um, uh, yeah, he's a beast. Uh, there's not much else to say. He's huge uh, and bullies uh, other offensive linemen um, to get to the quarterback, and he can get to the quarterback quick and uh, block up run lanes. I think he's just a beast. He's going to be a day one starter for whatever team takes him, and I think he's going to be uh, a very, very uh, a very good player. Uh, Serge, what do you think about this pick? 
Well, um, also you've heard um, some people have compared the um, Russo to um, Chase Young. I don't think he's on that level prospect because Chase Young was a special prospect um, coming into the 2020 NFL draft. But Greg Russo is an amazing pass rusher. Miami could honestly be a sleeper team, definitely on the defensive line as they have him and they'll have Quincy Roche this year. Um, he's a, uh, obviously a great prospect. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't count him out for best defensive uh and in the um, in the in the or even defensive year. lineman period. Yeah, best defensive lineman yeah. the year. Honestly, I wouldn't count him out. Um, I like Miami system. They've always they've had a pretty good defense for the. They struggled last year, but a couple of years ago they've had they had a pretty good defense. Um, I wouldn't count them out to have a very good season, and definitely they'll have to be led by their defense at Gregory Rousseau. Mm. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, no, definitely Gregory Rousseau. You know. He's 6'5", roughly 260. You know, um, definitely, in my opinion, the best edge threat in this draft. Um, you know, he's a, like, what's it, he's a right shirt sophomore. So, you know, he's still kind of young, you know. Um, I just think, you know, them, them Chase Young comparisons, it's a little much, in my opinion, because Chase Young is going to be, is going to, like, I bet you he takes over the league within, within the next mm -hmm. few years. But I think Gregory Russo is, like, not too, not too far behind in that, you feel me? So it's like he's gonna, he's gonna be part of a scary Miami team next year. I mean, they have offensive threats, they have defensive threats. They're just a good all-around team. So that'll definitely help, you know, boost team morale. Hopefully, you know, just make him a better player. And also, you can tell he has a good work work ethic. Like he's in high school, he was a three-star recruit. He's a three-star recruit coming out of high school. So, and you can tell as as someone who's who's probably a top ten prospect going in next year, you can tell the work that he had to put in. So he'll just keep developing and developing from there, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think he, that, that Miami team is definitely going to be an underrated team uh, next year. Um, so Gregory Rousseau, uh, a verified beast uh, as a defensive lineman. All right, let's go to the next pick where we have the best receiver possibly last year and, and maybe going into this year, depending on the season, in Jamar Chase. Uh, I mean, this guy is, is incredible. Uh, and it, it didn't it didn't hurt to have uh, the number one overall pick in Hodgson and winner Joe Burrow throwing to him last year. Uh, that's why this LSU team was so dominant uh, last year uh, in winning uh, uh, the national championship. I, I think he, he's just a very very good player. He he's an all around receiver. He he can deep threat and go up and catch a ball, and he can also uh, do short routes like a Michael Thomas type player. But then it can also go and and get catches. Uh, and then having Justin Jefferson, another first-round pick on the other side of him, it just makes him better and, and improves him. Um, I think whichever team get, gets this, I think this will be the most impactful player uh, so far, personally. I think this will be the most impactful player so far. I think he's, he's a huge talent. And I know that that might be a hot take, and I don't think – you guys might not agree with that, but I think uh, he's going to be a, a really, really good player. Um, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Chris, what do you think? Um, personally, I think Jamar Chase, you know, he's a part of like the scariest wide receiver duo in all of college last year, him, um, you know, him and Justin Jefferson. So, and Justin Jefferson, you know, being in the draft this year, I bet overshadowed Jamar Chase a slight bit, but next year um, we're really going to see what he can do. And like you said, with Joe Burrow throwing him ball, you know, deep balls, that didn't, that didn't hurt at all. So, you know, but Jamar Chase, like six one. 200 pounds you know he's he's you know he's, he's going to be bullying people out there so I'm just I'm, but I'm excited to see because he can really do it all and he, I think he's going to be a, a bit you're going to be hearing a lot more about him once he um, hits the NFL yeah I agree Serge what about you what, what, what are your thoughts on Jamar Chase well I, I love him I think obviously definitely the uh, best uh, wide receiver in the class um I think a lot of people, a lot of critics of Jamar Chase may argue, well, he benefited from having the best quarterback in college football last year throwing from him and one of the best receiving corps among him. But honestly, I think the same um, argument could be made that Jamar Chase made Joe Burrow better just as much, mm -hmm. honestly. Cause, oh, um, yeah. Like I said, of course, his physical strength, um, his physicality is amazing, 6'1", 220, like you said. Um, I think um, definitely I, um, when he led the um, – I think an impressive thing is that – he led the um, nation in receiving yards while having Justin Jefferson on the team mm -hmm. because yeah. that's amazing. Because usually for most players, obviously he, it, obviously they still play well, but it's hard to um, when you have a two, when you have another top three uh, receiver in the nation 
that a quarterback has to throw to, usually it's hard to win, um, hard to um, get um, accumulate that many yards. And honestly, uh, he he was so well deserving of that um, of the award, um, the for best receiver in the nation. Mm. Yeah, and coming out of high school, he's only a four-star recruit, so he's been proving people wrong. And in that national championship game, going up against Clemson's number one corner and AJ Terrell, and completely outplaying him uh, in every every way, and just uh, going to another level in that game, and single-handedly making AJ Terrell go from what I thought was the number three corner to the number five or six, which when you can do that as a player to another player like just devastate their career in such a way by, by the way you play it in one game is, is proof of your dominance in the sport. Um, and it wasn't, oh, sorry. Uh, it wasn't just, it wasn't just Terrell. It was honestly every week you'd play, he was mm-hmm. playing against, and in the SEC, you play against the best of the best. Every mm-hmm. week he was playing against corners yeah. like Trayvon Diggs, mm-hmm. Noah Gunagi, et cetera. Yeah, played, right. Even Patrick Sertain. Dominated. It yeah, was, right. And again, yeah, basically yeah. you can attribute that part of that to Joe Burrow, but again, yeah. a lot of it goes to Jamar Chase. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next – I think what is this, fifth? Yeah, right, fifth, where we have Micah Parsons, uh, the linebacker out of Penn State, uh, possibly one of the best Penn State players, I think, since Saquon Barkley. Uh, what a player. What what a linebacker. Incredible linebacker. Uh, just, just plays – plays, uh, goes to the ball, and is a dominant, dominant tackler. He can tackle very well and is very good at blocking run blocks. And even can he can get sacks for that team. Um, uh, and I think I compare him to a poor man's Isaiah Simmons. Uh, I know, oh, he wears number 11. You're just saying that because he wears number 11. No, I'm not. But uh, I think he he's, he's, uh, can be related in the way that he's just everywhere on the field. And is and is also very fast as well at that linebacker position, and can play. He can play safety. He can play, uh, um, and he can play linebacker and even outside. Uh, Serge, what do you think about Michael Parsons? Again, um, I love him. I think yes, he's not as good. He's definitely not as good as Isaiah Simmons, which mm-hmm. is not yeah. actually that far off. Yeah, he right. Really made um. He really made um the uh, Penn State defense a lot better. Um, like I said, he's like, he's like a Swiss Army knife. You could use him all around the board. I don't think what, if he gets the NFL, they're gonna um, they're gonna do that. I think they'll um, let us make him play one position. But he will be an absolute menace. Um, uh, if he plays maybe middle linebacker there, I think he'd be a menace in the middle of the field. A quarterback's gonna be watching him on every play. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough, and it's gonna be hard to play against him. And I think yeah, yeah I completely agree. Chris, what do you think? This prospect. Um, definitely, in my opinion, the one of the best, if not the best, defensive prospect coming out of this draft class. Like, he, I mean, he's just he's just an overall beast, and he's like, I mean, he'll hit you hard. So you don't want to you don't want to be with him in the open field. He'll hit you. He's, he's like six two, but he's two fifty. He's about two fifty. You don't want to you don't want to be one on one with him, you know. And he should he like people should be on the offense bench should be scared of him because he's just gonna. He's gonna he's gonna turn up next year at Penn State and then just like he's gonna light he's gonna light up the draft boards I swear mm-hmm. because he this man he's just he's just such a generational like talent mm-hmm. sure I, the Isaiah Simmons comparisons um, Isaiah Simmons is, is um, a, definitely a generational talent as well but he's like just you know mm-hmm. crazy like you, mm-hmm. you're not it's gonna be a long time until you see another one like Isaiah Simmons but he but Micah Parsons is uh, is like probably the man right below Isaiah Simmons. yeah yeah yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to the next where we have Sean Wade, another dominant corner uh, coming out of Ohio State. I know uh, this year two two Ohio State corners draft in the first round and Jeff Okuda and Damon Arnett. Uh, I'm going to let you guys start on this one because I had Patrick Sertain here. That I kind of got overruled on this pick. So I'm going to let uh, uh, Surridge, I want you to start on this one on, on what do you think about Sean Wade. Well, I really like Sean Wade. I think he's going to thrive. Um, 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 Ohio State has really a history of great cornerbacks, of course, like you said, Arnett and um, Akuda this year, but also uh, previous years. Um, net, we have now in the NFL Denzel Ward and Marshawn Lattimore. But, yeah, I love him. He's a, a great prospect. I'm really interested to see him this year because last year he was playing more as a slot corner a little bit more because, of, of course, Arnett and um, Arnett and Akuda usually took over the outside. But I think – He's a great 
I think he's a great prospect. He has great athleticism. He's going to thrive, obviously, with, uh, with Ohio State, obviously, again. History of great cornerbacks and just defense overall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I was going to um, I definitely, I definitely agree with, with all that. Um, as well as just, like, he's very, you know, I, I, I just, like, love his aggressiveness, you know. And he's just, like, a, he, he plays with a lot of, like, physical prowess, you know. Um, and you don't, like, I mean, he's, he, he's got, like, you know, he's quick. His, um, he accelerates very fast. You just don't, he, like, he's nice. He's real nice in press coverage. Like, you don't, you normally don't want to press someone, say, like, a Tyreek Hill. I think he's the, the man who could, like, who, who could press him successfully. He's just, like, a, he's quick, you know, um, and he'll just, he'll, he'll hit you hard, too. So, you know, you got to watch out for him. Yeah, I agree with what you guys say. Um, I think he was a good slot corner, a good press coverage, and a, and is going to be that that uh, dominant corner on Ohio that's going to match up against the best receivers in the Big Twelve next uh, next year. Now let's go to my my corner of this class uh, in Patrick Sertain, uh, a beast, and I think Trayvon Diggs going into this year was. May, like was his draft stock went up so much because people would not throw Patrick Sertain's way. You watch highlights against when they played uh, LSU and they just target, they're just targeting uh, a Trayvon Diggs and they're not throwing the way of Patrick Sertain because if you do, he's going to either intercept the ball or not let your receiver catch it. I think he's a, a shutdown cornerback and he's just a classic good cornerback that's a shutdown cornerback. And um, last year he had three fumble, uh, three forced fumbles, which is incredible for a cornerback. Forty-two tackles, two interceptions, which which are great numbers uh, for uh, a sophomore. Or was he a junior last, or a soft? I don't remember. I think he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore last year. Yeah, so in a, so, a sophomore season, second year uh, on one of the best ever uh, um, college football teams, if not the best. Um, so I think, I think he's. I personally think he's going to go earlier uh, than Sean Wade, but I think. Um, I think he's an incredible player and a very, very uh, solid cornerback. Uh, Serge, what do you think about Patrick Sertain? Yeah, I really like him. Like, honestly, I would say Patrick Sertain – I don't know, I mean, uh, Sean Wade's here and Patrick Sertain's, like, right here. Like, they're neck and neck. I think Sean Wade, I, I like his athleticism, but Sertain, like you said, not far behind. Um, he's a great cornerback. And, again, SEC, best, of, best against the best. Sertain more than held his own. Had a great year, like you said, for a sophomore. He played a mm – -hmm played amazing um Willie Le uh, it's gonna be tough obviously there's a lot of pressure as his father also played in the NFL uh, Patrick Sertain the first um Patrick Sertain senior um it's gonna be tough for him to live up to it but he definitely has the potential to do so Chris what are you yeah no I I personally if I had to say like an NFL comparison I think Patrick Sertain reminds me the most of Jalen Ramsey like yeah. Shut down corner, like you know, just a shut down corner. Get in your, not afraid to get, not afraid to get gritty in your face, you know. And teams intentionally look away from him because they're just they're scared of what he can do. They're, mm -hmm. He he can he he can be the momentum changer in every game he's in. So you know yeah. you don't want to uh, you don't want to throw the ball his way. Then yeah. I think he'll be whatever team gets him will have will it'll be the start to a sec uh, a scary secondary. So you know yeah. that'll be good. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next, where we have Creed Humphrey, the offensive lineman out of uh, Oklahoma. Uh, I think I think he's a good. I think don't get me wrong, he's a good player, and I think he he's one of the a very good offensive lineman. But I personally, I, this is another one where I overruled. I think I had Walker Little here. Uh, the one thing I, was, I think he's a great offensive lineman, and he's a very good pass and run blocker. But I think his arms are just too short, and that I know that sounds dumb, but that's something that's gonna might bring his draft stock down because being able when the snap to get immediately your hands onto uh, whoever's trying to rush your quarterback is definitely better if you have longer arms uh, to make to keep them away uh, any any amount like as long as your arms are. Uh, so I'll let you guys kind of uh, deliberate about uh, this player, uh, Chris. What do you think? So. Personally, Creed Humphreys, I like him. Um, I yeah, I did kind of overrule you on this one, but I had I, I I could say personally, I think I had good reason. First of all, the the dude, he's just like a tank. Like you see, he's he's, just, he's big, so you know he, he'll over he'll, he'll overpower most people. Like he he was a wrestler. He was you know he was he was a big time wrestler too. So you know mm -hmm. that'll help with that. Um, 
He's got he's good at he's good at like you know deflecting defenders' hands, keeping a guy in front of him. Except yeah, when you were talking about the arms, you know, I was like that is one bit that that is a con in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but another con about him is like his like his lower body. His lower body, you can mm-hmm. tell I just after watching highlights. Um, it's like it's a little weak. Like you can definitely build that up. It's just like you know coming off the snap. If someone hits him immediately, he'll kind of you know like get pushed back. He'll get pushed around mm-hmm. a little bit if he doesn't get if he doesn't get a good second to set up. So you know he just needs to become a little quicker and a little stronger in the lower body. Yeah, Serge, what about you? What's what's your opinion? Yeah, I mostly agree with Chris. Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, he does. He, his lower body definitely is a problem. He does definitely have to get stronger, quicker. The hand concern definitely worries me, but I think honestly, um, the coaching factor will play a big role in this. Um, OU also another um team that has a lot of um as great offensive line coaching. Um, and he's gonna be really he's gonna be tested a bit this year, but I think I think he can handle it. I think he's a very solid offensive line prospect. Yeah. All right, let's go. To the oh sorry went back one. Let's go to the next pick where we have Travis Etienne, the running back out of Clemson, uh, possibly one of the best running backs last year as a uh, sophomore. Uh, great year, uh, really fast and, and small, but very built running back at 210 pounds, I believe. Very very muscular, and he can take hits uh, from linebackers in the NFL and and stay on his feet. Um, which is something that is is very well needed. Uh, he kind of has that agility of Saquon Barkley being able to get hit, but like stay on his feet. Um, and I think uh, I think uh, so he's he's I think he's gonna be great. And I think whatever team takes him, I think they're gonna is it's definitely gonna depend on on what their scheme is and how they play with their running backs. Uh, also, a very good receiving back for that team. Another uh, weapon for for. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, great at, uh, after the catch, uh, great at, at catching and running and 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 burning, whatever uh, opposing defense is against him. Serge, what do you think? Oh my, I love this prop. I love Etn easily. I think to me, um, the best running back in this class. I think he was the best. Um, he was actually sorry, correct you, Kim, but I think he was actually a junior last year, which would have made oh, him eligible. Okay. 20, mm-hmm. for the 2020 NFL draft, which if he'd gone there, I think honestly he could have gone first first off the board last um last year um. As a running back, right? Not yeah, as yeah, actual. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, as a running back. Uh, yeah. um, but I loved him. I loved the prospect. I loved, um, he's great. Uh, obviously, speed, um, intelligence. He's got a good vision. Um, he's, uh, he's actually he's, – he's a little bit small, but I think he's, he's strong. I think um, – um, this might be not a very popular thought, but um, honestly, if – I think Clemson wouldn't be nearly – everyone likes to talk about Trevor Lawrence on Clemson, but – if ETN didn't play for the um for the Tigers last year, I think they wouldn't have been nearly as good as they as they were. Because ETN makes that team so much better. He elevates them so much. He's a great running back. He puts up really good numbers, but he's so much more than that, honestly. Chris, what about you? Yeah, yeah like I was gonna say, you know, his speed is deadly. You know, coming off of a block, his speed is deadly. Um, he's very very explosive. Um. But you know, one of my cons, um, in my opinion, about him is um, his hands. You know, he's like um, only throughout his career at Clemson, he only has like 17 receptions, something like that. Um, I saw my research and his decision making um, sometimes, you know, and like his vision from the backfield. He's short. I get it. But there's a lot of short running backs who can see well. But I, that can definitely be improved over time throughout his development. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think, you know, his vision and all that you know, seeing the hole quick enough to get through. Um, I think, you know, he just needs to work on that a bit. Um, but definitely I could I could see where you're coming from when you say Clem- that Clemson team was not what they were without him because, yeah, Trevor Lawrence this, Trevor Lawrence that, which, I mean, rightfully so. Trevor Lawrence is just like an absolute just beast. Mm-hmm. But Travis Etienne was a big, weapons to be a big part of that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All right, but, let's yeah, go. Travis Etienne got a lot of, you know, yeah, overshadowed. Right. To the next pick where we have, I personally think, uh, a little bit of a higher offensive lineman in um, Walker Little, uh, I believe a tackle – is tackle, uh, never mind, out of uh, Stanford. Stanford no, known for producing some good offensive linemen. I think he's a very, very good tackle. He's, as you can tell, big tackle, over 300 pounds. I believe over 6'3 or 6'4, a uh, very tall, tall, big offensive lineman. So he's going to be able to uh, – um, 
you know, be a dominant player that, that is going to be hard to get past on any, on any team's offense. Um, yeah, I think, I think he, there's not much to say. I personally don't fi- can't find that much to say about offensive linemen besides they can block and he's good at that. And he's good at blocking and, and in, in, in football, if you're offensive lineman, you'd be good at blocking and, and not let up sacks and let up and let up uh, rushing yards. And I think, a big thing for offensive linemen at not only Walker Little is the the rate he's going to be seen, uh, the the way people are going to grade how he plays is based on the production of, of the running back, how many yards, and not only that, but also uh, uh, quarterback sacks and hits and, and uh, yards of that uh, sort. Okay, so let's uh, – I'm sorry. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Um. Okay, so personally, I think – so he's a tackle, but he could – um, I think he would probably benefit in the NFL, put in the right system. I think he would actually benefit from being a guard because if you think about it, one of his cons was he lets a lot of blockers – or I mean, I'm sorry, not blockers um, – defensive players get around him easily, you know, from, like, the outside because he's not quick enough. You know, he needs to work on that quickness a little bit. So I think he would definitely benefit from being more of an interior lineman than a, um, an outside lineman. But still pretty good um, overall. Like, he's, he's consistent. He's, he's, he's actually pretty consistent, but um, one more con is like, you know, when there's, um, he'll like, he doesn't really overcommit himself on someone. He's kind of, when blocking, he's kind of all over the place. Um, like he doesn't stick to a man. So, you know, sometimes that can be a, you know, that that can just be seen as something that, that could easily be fixed, but it, it's, it's seen as, you know, something that could be work. That mm-hmm. just needs work for sure. Serge, what about you? What's, um, I like Walker, Walker Little. Um, I think um, I really like um, his, um, his build. He has a really good build for an offensive lineman. Like I said, again, I'm a, a big way about um, well, that will affect his um, draft stock again is whether or not how he does um, in the pass protection. And run protect, he's, mm-hmm. a great, he's a great run blocker. I love him as a run blocker. But, again, yeah, like you said, Chris, um, he struggled a, bit in, uh, struggled a bit in pass protection and definitely could benefit from being a guard. But I think honestly, like um, th- these things could be fixed, and and I think a lot of scouts will be very intently looking at Walker Little's um, se- um, junior, I think junior or senior season. I don't know, sorry, but mm-hmm. I think they're going to be looking really um, intently at his senior season to see um, how he grows as a pass protector. And I think mm-hmm. honestly, he definitely has the potential to do it. Um, yeah, I think if right. if he does have a good season, he could honestly be a top ten pick come next year yeah yeah okay let's go to uh the next uh prospect in justin ross wide receiver out of mm-hmm. clemson uh played next to t higgins so it's kind of a uh, more underwhelming justin jefferson and jamar chase wide receiver duo but i mean you can be compared to that because you know they have the joe burrow great quarterback trevor lawrence good quarterback justin jefferson went off in the first round t higgins went off the first pick of the second round so uh, and then and then uh, Jamar Chase, a really good receiver, that's going to be going off, and now Justin Ross here. So I think th- there's comparisons there, but I think he's great. He, he's a good receiver. He's t- a tall receiver and goes up and gets balls. And he's like, he, he, correct me if I'm wrong, but I give this a kind of Michael Thomas uh, type of uh, comparison uh, where he just has that size that overwhelms corners uh, in football. And I think. Not only that, he's good at, at run after the catch. So I think whoever, uh, whichever team drafts him, is definitely going to be able to use him very well uh, as as just a a, a very well skilled receiver. Uh, Serge, what about you? Yeah, I like him. Um, actually, as a freshman, his uh, first year um, as a wide receiver, he dominated in the national championship against Alabama. Uh, he torched them. I think um, he still he had a pretty he had a pretty good um um uh, sophomore season. I think. I'm really excited for his uh, junior, um, for his junior season. I don't know if he's gonna be able to catch Jamar Chase. That's gonna be, I mean, that's really difficult for anyone. No, no, that's not what I was comparing to. I was just saying like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I know, but I think he's, but I think he's got a great quarterback, obviously, in Trevor Lawrence, and he, I think he's a great pass catcher. I think uh, last year he was um, better. I think he's a little better than T Higgins. T Higgins, that is partly because T Higgins was injured a little bit of the time, but mm-hmm. I think Justin Ross had a very good season. I think I'm really, I think. Definitely, um, a lot of people think he's a little bit. Uh, he's not the second best receiver in the class. I think he definitely is. I think um, he's got great potential. I think, I think he's definitely second in line to um, uh, Jamar Chase. Yeah, Chris, what do you think? 
Yeah, no, I definitely agree with all that. I definitely agree with your uh, Michael Thomas-esque comparison, you know. Like, he's a length, you know, kind of like long receiver, 6'3". Um, you can kind of see – you can kind of tell from the picture he got some long arms. Yeah. Um, definitely not – yeah, definitely – will be like a good, you know, red zone threat because you can just throw it up mm-hmm. and trust him to get it, you know, good in those jump balls. Um, just overall, I like him as a prospect. Um, yeah, I could, you yeah, know, the number two um, uh, receiver slot in this definitely seems to mm-hmm. um, fit him. Confirm. Yeah. All right, now let's go uh, to the linebacker mm-hmm. out of Alabama. Uh, what do you guys think about – oh, my God, what is his name? I completely forgot his name. Bill Dylan Moses. Bill, Dylan Moses, sorry, I completely forgot his yeah. name. Um, Dylan Moses, linebacker out of Alabama. Correct me if I'm wrong, didn't play last year. Uh, what was it? Due to ACL in- injury. Yeah, due to ACL injury. I, God, sorry. I'm blanking. Um, uh, due to ACL injury. Uh, but the year before, as a as a freshman, I believe. Uh, as a freshman? Yeah. Yeah, obviously as a freshman. Um, was an in- incredible uh, all-over-the-place linebacker uh, who people were definitely talking about. And I think um, he'll definitely be a, a very good linebacker uh, in the NFL. And he's just that prototype linebacker that teams want. He can cover and he can stop the run and he can and he can just be a dominant tackler all over the field and be everywhere. Um, Chris, what do you think? Um, definitely. So I, this this prospect definitely excites me. You know, Dylan Moses. Like I, aside from my biggest con, in my opinion, <clears throat> is durability. You know, those AC, those ACL injuries definitely not helping his case. In my opinion, if he stays healthy, he's the most NFL-ready defensive prospect in this, just be, just purely because of how much earlier he could have um, could have went. You know, he could because he, as he's going into his senior season, could have went, you know, last year in the draft um, and definitely looked NFL-ready until up until that ACL injury. Great hands, great lower body, you know, explosiveness. Um, I'm just my my biggest question is just durability. But you know, if he if he can end up staying healthy, he will have a bright future. Mm-hmm. Serge, what's up? Yeah, what I think? definitely uh, agree. He definitely could have um, entered the um, entered the draft. Oh, like you said, um, Chris, he doesn't he doesn't really have um, his big main weakness is really durability. I honestly think if um, he does have a, if he does have a good season, which is very possible, I think if he as a good season and now as, as a veteran I think he could easily be a top 10 pick because there, there are teams definitely looking forward uh, looking for a good linebacker I think he'd be second only to Micah Parsons just because again um, durability issues but I think he's a, a great prospect um, honestly I think he could be um, the anchor uh, behind the defense if you if mm-hmm. you're really if you're really looking for like that big piece that you need mm-hmm. so yeah I really like him as a prospect. right all right Let's go to the next where we have uh, – sorry, you can introduce because I, I know you like this player a lot. So you can oh, yeah, I, this I love this. Javon Holland, um, he's uh-huh. from Oregon. He's a safety. Um, what I really like about him is he's really – no weaknesses. Um, I mean, I guess minor, but, like, he's really – he does, he's doesn't have, like, anything that he's amazingly good at, but he's just – he's very good, very uh, technically aware. He's, again, uh, like a hybrid type kind of safety. You can play him – you can play him in multiple positions. Um I think he could definitely um, be a big part behind Oregon's really good, oh, uh, really good defense in uh, mm-hmm. 2020. Um, I, like I said, really like him. He's, um, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. I just, prototype. I, I think safety. he's. I think a lot of people, other people. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people would say this. Like some people, other people would disagree, but I think he's the best safety in um, in this class. Yeah, yeah. All right, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, no, I I definitely agree. He is in my opinion, the best safety prospect in his draft. Um, you know, all, overall, he can do it all. You know, um, in my opinion, though, he just needs to, you know, put on – put you know, just like add a little – you know, bulk up a little bit just so he can, you yeah. know, in, inflict some more, you know, damage against his um, opponents. But overall, he's just a, like, solid prospect, and I don't really see any, you know, just big cons that any, that any NFL team should be worried about. Yeah. I agree with you guys mostly. I don't know too much about this player, uh, but I agree with you guys uh, mostly on, on all of what you said. He seems like a very prototype safety. He doesn't seem to have that many weaknesses. I know he's very fast. Um, so I think he, uh, any team that gets him is definitely going to be happy. Okay, let's go to now starting to get to the end. 15th uh, ranked player in Gregory Roche, uh, Roche, the transfer from Temple to Miami. Um 
first of all, Miami, like, nice job. You got an incredible pass rusher to go next to Gregory Rousseau just to add to that dominant defensive line. Um, and I think there could be some pros and cons for him and Gregory Rousseau because for him, Gregory Rousseau might be a lot, getting a lot more spotlight than him, which can definitely affect draft stock. But as well, he's going to be able to play with Gregory Rousseau and there's going to be so much more pressure. They're going to be able to – uh, just get so much pressure onto the uh, onto the quarterback uh, and overwhelm uh, um, offenses with that defensive line. And I think he's a great player. I think he's going to be a, 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 a mid to late first round pick. Um, so yeah, I like this guy a lot. Um, uh, Chris, what do you think? Um, yeah, no, definitely that Miami that Miami defensive line that defensive front is just going to be scary next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think. He, I think he fell on people's draft boards a lot, mainly because he's a redshirt senior, you know, just just because of purely because of that skill. Does I mean he has he doesn't lack much skill, you know, big guy, six, you know, six four, pretty good size, you know, just overall he's gonna. I bet you he gets overshadowed a little bit by uh, Gregory Russo, but um, just don't sleep, just don't sleep on Quincy Roche because like he's, I, I mean he's, I mean Gregory Russo is here, Quincy Roche is here. Like I mean, it's just don't just don't sleep on him, and they'll, that team is definitely going to have an impact on the defensive end next year. Serge, what do you think? Um, I like him. Um, I think yes, definitely I agree. Um, do expect a definitely a stat dip from um, from last year because again he's going to be playing next to uh, Gregory Rosu Rosal. Um, but yeah, I, I really like him. Like you said, doesn't lack much skill. A great um, he has great um. He has great physical attributes. Um, he's definitely going to be tough to play against as an offensive tackle. Um, a little bit like a little bit raw as a prospect, but I think he definitely has the potential to be um, a very good um, defensive end. Yeah, I agree. Now to our last uh, last player. Oh yeah, I like this one, Chris. I want you to introduce this one. This this is your guy. Yeah. All right. So I, you know this one. This one excites me a bit. Trey Lance. You know I've been kind of reading up on him recently. I get it. He goes to North Dakota State. You can't, I mean, you can kind of count him out for that. But I, I kind of vouch for him to be this high up in the draft board because, you, you, I mean, the man threw 42 touchdowns and zero interceptions last year. If it was like D3, something like that, I could get that. But, it's, I mean, it's not like he's versing FBS talent either. And we're really gonna, he's really going to have a true test this year with his opener against Oregon, who has a pretty good defense. And um, I'm just excited to see what he can do. Um, and if he really proves himself this year, I could definitely see him not falling past the top 10. Yeah. All right, Serge. Yeah, like I said, what everyone will look at at first is uh, 42 touchdowns, zero picks. Uh, I think he's an honestly an amazing prospect. Like you said, uh, yes, he did go to North Dakota State, but FCS isn't, isn't actually that bad um, – that, that bad second division. I'm like uh, like you. I'm very excited to see how he does against Oregon. I think he'll definitely be able to hold his own. Um, a comparison, yes, is may, may people. This is partly due to um another player who did uh, comparing to another him to another player who did go to um, North Dakota State, Carson Wentz. He's yep. uh, very mobile, has a good arm. He does take um he does take um a few shots, but I think honestly. I think I think he reminds me a lot of him uh, definitely with his mobility and mm. and uh, yeah yeah I agree with you I think Serge when you said ta- he takes shots I think you want to have a, you I would rather go into a game with a quarterback that's willing to to take risks instead of one that's willing to play it safe and uh, maybe some NFL teams don't agree with that but I think yeah I think that Oregon game is definitely going to be a decider I think if he doesn't play well that's not going to prove well to that's NFL true. scouts yeah no if he does if he doesn't yeah. play well he'll definitely fall on those draft boards yeah. big time. Um, yeah, I mean, the argument's always going to be, well, you know, he's not in the SEC, uh, he's not in the Big 12, like, he's not playing anyone, like, yeah, I could do zero interceptions, but, I mean, it's still D1 football, and it's still playing against uh, the highest level in college, against uh, some of the best, or not the best talent, but some of, some of, uh, um, very, uh, some very good okay. football players. Okay. State's always a powerhouse, so that you expect them to get you expe- um in the FCS they're a powerhouse. So you expect them to get um the best prospects. The best yeah, prospects. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, that should do it for the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, if you made it to the end, make sure to leave a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you're new. Tell your friends about the channel. Uh, we're trying to hit 200 subscribers definitely soon. 
Um, uh, oh, yeah, and uh, comment any videos you guys want to see because we read all the comments. So if you guys want to see any videos, definitely make sure to do that. Uh, and, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and uh, new videos out every day. Um, and our, our Instagram and TikTok and all that stuff will be linked down below uh, or on the screen right now. Um, all right, guys. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye.